simply this. Each member cultivates other members' external memory. So you go to a meeting and you say, I'm about to undertake this project. Has anybody on this board done this before? Now you're benefiting from the collective memory of the team. And the great thing about teams is that they pass the knowledge to the next team if they're doing their job right. Okay. When you look at, it, uh, uh, at Islam, one of the principles of shura, you don't go and consult everybody. Shura is not about consulting everybody. If you look at the books of shura, it says you consult ahli arai, those people who have a competency. Those people have a competency. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was listening to Salman al-Farsi, somebody who had knowledge of a technology that he didn't have. A competency. Value added. That's what we're talking about. Okay? He wasn't telling Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam something he already knew. Okay? So, this idea of transactive memory systems is critical. If you are on a board and you do not benefit from the collective memory of the people on that board, and you do not appoint people based on their core competency, you are really not, you, and you don't have a common purpose, you don't have a team. So, to, to move on, how do teams differ from groups, shared leadership. That leadership will move around the group depending on the situation, like we gave the example earlier on. My style of leadership doesn't fit the situation. Somebody else's does. I should be humble enough to know that there's somebody else who's better than me at doing this and differ to it. The great scholars who founded the schools of thought in the book by Sheikh Taha Jabir al Alwani, The Ethics of Disagreement in Islam. He pointed out that when you would go to one of them, if he didn't know, you'd say, I don't know. Go ask the other one. So you have to recognize your limitations, build on your core competencies, right? And the leadership as a result will flow around depending.